And joining us live via Skype is a public health physician, Dr. Kasarachi Omitiran. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you. Now, uh, a lot of people are actually confused about COVID-19 and its implication for their day-to-day -day life. Could you simplify things for us a bit? Okay. Um, people are meant to be confused because it's something strange. It's new. You know, it's a pandemic. It's everywhere and it's highly infectious. And then the news is not helping matters a lot too. For instance, um, in early February, nothing was happening in Nigeria, and then by March, everywhere, everywhere has been shut down and all that. So the COVID virus, the COVID disease is a, a, a new form of disease that has come, and it affects um, people's lives. It's a respiratory disease. It's transferred by respiratory droplets, and then it's very, it's very, very infectious. The second, the, the another thing is that we don't have our health systems are not strong enough to handle a lot of sick people at once. So people are supposed to be confused because like with everything new, it has so many unknowns, there are no vaccines, there are no drugs for it and all that. So yeah, people are supposed to be confused. All right, doctor, we hear that the virus is still being studied. What do we know about its characteristics so far rather? Okay, so the coronavirus is not a new virus per se. It's a large family of viruses that cause a range of illnesses from the common cold to more severe diseases. The current COVID-19 is caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is a new, a new, a new one. Um, it's transmitted from person to person mainly, directly through respiratory droplets and contact. It could also be indirectly transmitted through contaminated objects and surfaces. A lot of investigations and a lot of studies are being done on the virus, and it's been found that it could be detected in aerosols for up to three hours, and then it could stay on copper for up to four hours, and then on cardboard and um, for more, up to 24 hours. So it's um, the virus is not... Okay. Yeah, so... Um, so due to this high transmission and then it's easy, it's high infect infectivity, that's why, our, that's why public health advisories and a lot of public health organizations are calling for social distancing measures, non-pharmaceutical measures to curb the spread and transmission of the virus. One of the things we also hear is the fact that it has been likened to a common flu, but why is it killing so many people? Okay, it's not... Um, it's not exactly a common flu, you know. Like I mentioned earlier, it presents in a range of illnesses, like on a spectrum. So the lower, the lower end of the spectrum is the common flu. But then at the other end of the spectrum, you have, you have um, like severe pneumonia, respiratory distress symptoms, even multi-organ failure. So it is not exactly a common flu. It's worse than a common flu. All right. Uh, again, we hear that uh, some people are afraid to go for diagnosis because, you know, the testing process is a painful one. Could you confirm that? And please enlighten us, you know, as to what goes on during the actual testing. Okay, so um, the testing is done through a polymerase chain reaction. There are two different types of tests to, to check for viruses. One is to check for the presence of the virus, and then one is to check for antibodies produced in response to the virus. Currently, the testing being done is to check for the presence of the virus, which, like I have mentioned, is through the polymerase chain reaction. What happens is not exactly a painful process. It is described as uncomfortable, you know. And then what happens is there are, you, you get a nasopharyngeal swab, so just to break that down, it's just like um, a cotton bud, you know, the ones we used to clean out, yes? A longer version of that is just like a, 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 with, um, a cotton tip. And then it's, it's inserted into your nostrils. And it goes as far back as the back of your nostrils, the junction between your throat and your nose. And it, that, that site is used because that's where the virus is found in high, in high numbers. So you, that the swab is stuck in through your nose to the back of the throat, and then the swab is it's switched around for like 10 to 15 seconds, and then it's taken out and taken for a test. So it's not exactly painful, but then it's, it's, it's quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
I can imagine from your mm. explanation. We also yeah. hear of uh, contact uh, tracing. Let's talk about contact uh, tracing. How is it exactly carried out when we hear, you know, governments and people say we've started tracing contacts? How is that done? Okay, so um, I'll first of all explain who a contact is. So a contact of a COVID-19 case is any person who has had contact with a confirmed case from two hours before the onset of symptoms to 14 days after. And then if the person doesn't have symptoms, because we know that some, some cases don't have any symptoms, they just, they just test positive. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it would be two hours from the time a positive test was confirmed to 14 days after the sample was taken. So back to contact tracing, the purpose of identifying these contacts, like I mentioned earlier, the disease is a very highly infectious and highly transmissible disease. So we want to identify the contacts so that it won't be transmitted further to stop the transmission. The process of contact tracing is, so when you have a case, you identify all the contacts of that case. It's like a, you have to recollect, it's like a recall, you know. The case has to recall all the people he or she has come in contact with. And then that's contact identification. And then their details are taken down. Mm -hmm. So we have contact identification and then line listing. You know, so the details of the contacts are taken down, their names, their phone numbers, you know, that kind of thing. And then they are called. So when they are called, the, 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 call, the callers want to classify the contacts into high risk and low risk because that would also determine what is done for that contact. So what, what are high risk contacts? People that have had direct contact with the case, like family members, caregivers, you know, those, those kind of things, those are high risk contacts. So we want to find out from the contacts if, they, if they've had any symptoms. We would also want them to stay away from other people, that's self-quarantine. And then the contacts will be called on a regular basis, on a daily basis, to ascertain if they, if they have any symptoms, if they're feeling ill, you know, and all that kind of thing. So we want to make sure that the contacts don't develop any symptoms. And we want to also make sure that the contacts don't come in contact with any other person. What has the response been so far in terms of this contact tracing? Okay, so um, NCDC has done quite a good job with contact tracing. For all the cases that have come into the country or that have been discovered in the country, I know that NCDC has made sure to call them for up to 14 days to monitor their symptoms, their progress, and all that. If you check on the, on the social media, you see people coming out to say, thank you, NCDC, for calling me, for following up on me, for checking up on me. So I think the response to contact tracing by NCDC has actually been very good. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kasarachi, we have also seen, uh, you know, some kind of technical development in response to uh, the pandemic. Do you think we should, we, should we expect more of it? In for instance, there are some young people we hear have fixed uh, a ventilator. Should we um, expect more of this in the coming days? Yes, I think it's, I think we should, you know, um, adversity brings out a lot of um, talents or a lot of things hidden in people. So just yeah, um, like you mentioned, a group of young engineers have produced a prototype ventilator. And then just yesterday, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure have also been reported to produce ventilators. So it's a good it's a good sign for the country. Mm -hmm. Apart from just the ventilators, you know, this has also um, brought out the entrepreneurship in our people. We have a lot of hand sanitizers being produced across the country. We have a lot of face masks being produced across the country. So I think Nigerians are rising up to the challenge that coronavirus is posing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, mm -hmm. Dr. Kasarachi, for your You're time. Welcome. And please keep safe. Thank you. I just wanted to mention one more thing. Um, so the government has put in place a lot of non-pharmaceutical measures to curb the spread, like w wash your hands regularly, use hand sanitizers, the cough etiquette, cough into your elbow, social distancing. These things are for our own good. Thank you, you know, so very much, Dr. Kasarachi. Use...